Hi, Omar. Uh, Hi, Zaina. <laughs> good to have you. Thank um, you. You too. I just, before we um, start, maybe we just, uh, on the behalf of both of us, we just want to thank both TBA21 for this opportunity and Ashkal1 for producing this work and bringing it together. Uh, it was such a pleasure to work with you, and I'm glad we're doing this um, recording session we, where we get to talk a little bit more publicly about what our process was and how this work came about. So the work that was commissioned um, from you um, and that you produced is a video work that's called Abu Farid's War. So maybe just to get started talking about it, um, you can explain in just a you know, couple of sentences. Everyone's able to see it now online, but uh, you can talk about what the video is, what it's talking about and everything. And then we'll go into how, it, how the idea of it com came about and how we started doing it. Sure. Uh, so uh, Abu Farid's war is a video on Abu Farid. Uh, Abu translates in Arabic to the father of, and it's a nicknaming uh, technique that is used uh, very much uh, in, in this uh, part of, of our world. Uh, Abu Farid, who's a, an archaeology inspector and a conservator, uh, shares his uh, image library with me, and the image library documents uh, mosaic works. Uh, in the aftermath of several bombings that uh, happened on the Museum of Ma'arat al naman in Idlib in Syria. And uh, the images document these independent preservation efforts that followed, uh, mainly led by Abu Farid on the ground with, uh, with, a, another, with a group of, of other uh, individuals. And, uh, you know, as, as um, the images open up a kind of... Um, uh, aleatory conversation, which which weaves itself into bigger questions on cultural heritage and territory, on uh, ideas of the preservation, its techniques, and the destruction, uh, traceability, and looting, as well as uh, generally the kind of uh, general theme of the production and circulation of images in times of uh, of uh, war. Yeah, I was just re-watching it and thinking about it and. Uh, I really like the interaction between you two, how you're talking to one another. It really flows and it's kind of, it really shows that you've known one another for a while. So mm -hmm. maybe, I guess like that's something that you and I talked about um, initially also. So um, just tell us a little bit about how, why you wanted to do this video, how the idea of it came about and how you met Abu Farid and what's the relationship there? The process obviously started with the invitation from Ashkal Anwar Alwan in collaboration with TBA21 to produce this work uh, for a stage. Uh, and I had been thinking about uh, mosaics for some time then, uh, after coming across an article a few years back, which talks about Syria's monument men. Uh, a group of individuals who consolidated their efforts and expertise and lives to, to protect and safeguard uh, mosaic, mosaic pieces at the Museum of Ma'arat al naman And they refer to as Monument Men in reference to the group of uh, men uh, in World War II that also uh, tried uh, to safeguard and salvage uh, lots of European uh, uh, artworks. Um, so uh, after I read this this article, uh, I was there was something about the act of turning towards mosaics amidst the war uh, that that stuck with me. Um, not only because this act or this event uh, floated above what have become a kind of a uniform sea of news and images and numbers on Syria, but also because it it crystallized a particular relationship between art and politics and war, which is a topic that I come back to often, a relationship that was urgent, direct, and utilitarian, uh, right? These are a group of men who are acting uh, in, in an emergency manner, uh, uh, on the spot, on the ground. Uh, so this kind of urgent, direct, utilitarian relationship is one that I often critiqued or dodged or circumvented in other works uh, that I had done before, usually opting, opting for I don't know what I would call the indirect or the reflective or the poetic. So, so there was this kind of um, 
I think, uh, a friction or clash that kind of uh, lured me in. Uh, I got in touch with um, Professor Amr al-Azam, whose name offer, uh, often appeared in many of these articles since he was the founder or board member of the Day After Initiative, uh, the coordinator of another initiative called the Heritage Protection Initiative for uh, Cultural Heritage Protection. Uh, and also the co-director of Athar project. He had been uh, the director of the uh, scientific and conservation laboratories at the General Department of Antiquities and Museums in Syria from 1999 to 2004. He also taught at the University of Damascus before eventually leaving Syria uh, after the war broke and becoming an outspoken opponent to the Syrian regime. Now, uh, Professor Amr Azam is uh, the, uh, he's a professor of Middle East history and anthropology in Ohio, um, and he was the one who actually put me in touch with Abu Farid, who was one of the men uh, leading these conservation efforts on the ground. Mm -hmm. uh, Abu Farid himself worked as a mechanical engineer and uh, at the Directorate General of Antiquities and Museums, which belongs to the, to the uh, government basically, mm -hmm. uh, where he was an internal antiquities inspector. Uh, until 2013. Mm -hmm. And then since 2014, he became uh, the director of the Cultural Heritage Protection Center at the museum, as he tells us uh, in the video. Um, at first, my relationship with Abu Farid was also quite practical. Uh, he supplied me with images documenting their work in the museum, images which I began to use as basis for uh, to create mosaic pieces, uh, mosaic pieces that I wanted to produce. And Abu Farid introduced me to Abu Amir, who was the master mosaicist I worked with to produce these mosaic pieces. Uh, but up until that point, the new mosaic pieces that uh, that uh, I was working on um, revealed nothing or revealed very little of their source contexts and references. Uh, in a sense, that all the behind the scenes work was was giving way to kind of an implicit manifestation, which is in the mosaic itself. You don't see, uh, you see it kind of uh, you know as a culmination and an image without uh, without the kind of workings or the the wires uh, uh, behind it. But that eventually changed uh, with, with this commission. And the, uh, in came this commission and it proposed the, the new challenge of producing an online work. Um, and it was, uh, it was uh, interesting because adding the virtual to the mix also meant that materiality was, was challenged. Uh, the tactile, physical, new mosaics were now looping back to becoming images. Yep. Right, because of the online kind of yep. uh, nature, and they were becoming images quite similar to the source images they source images they came from, and gradually Abu Farid's images uh, started coming to the foreground, start to emerge on and around the mosaic panels, which have themselves now become images. Yep. Uh, in the earlier process of this project, I sifted through the images in order to pull out the ones that will be the inspiration for mosaics. But now it had become clear that I needed to revisit all of these images to engage them in a process of slow looking. Mm -hmm. uh, and with this, uh, Abu Farid's voice also started to echo across this image library to eventually take over. The, the side chats and voice messages that we exchanged were not only research material, but became also the fabric of this visual work or video yeah. uh, through Abu Farid's voice, um, remembering, describing, and uh, reflecting on these images. Yeah. And let's get back to that materiality aspect in a little bit, because I think it defines the work quite a bit, but let's, uh, first, I want to ask you, like, there are a lot of, I mean, like, watching the video, you see it and it's very blatant and I mean um it becomes a part of the work but I think like there's something about the fact that there are like interruptions I was just like the internet uh internet interruptions or the whatsapp like as you mm -hmm. said like voices mm -hmm. and everything this is something I think you very meaningfully bring into the work and it becomes a structural part of it and I don't know if you were thinking about it to start off with but it like makes the um the conversation actually much more human uh, mm -hmm. much more like of the day of today it's a very current conversation but it also brings up a lot of structural issues about like what this man is dealing with right it's a lot about like how do you communicate yourself like um, outside and how do you get in touch with people? How do you collect information? And all of these things come through that. Um, 
do you did you have that in mind to start off with? I mean, I mean, uh, yeah, not re not uh, not so uh, consciously. I think it um, it came uh, it came about during the process just because of the reality of where we where I live and where Abu Farid lives, and I think we live in in the countries with the worst internet in the world. Uh, so it was inevitable that that this interruption would happen as we were uh, trying to connect. Um, and for me, uh, leaving it also, uh, uh, as you said, became uh, gave uh, gave a kind of a, a particular uh, uh, intimacy and believability to our conversation. It added some sort of a texture. Uh, it also highlighted the kind of um, uh, digital artifice of where our voices are 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 you know colliding and and working with with each other, which which also contrasted quite a bit the more mechanical physical carousel existence of uh, um, in the video, and um, I mean it was really a, a challenge to be able to. Uh, connect and communicate as, as seamlessly as one would like to. Uh, I would spend uh, literally days waiting for uh, Abu Farid's images to upload on his part and then so that I could download them on, on, on my part. Same thing with videos. Videos were, were, were proved to be impossible to send, uh, really. And when, when he would send them, they would come, I would receive them a few days later, quite uh, choppy. And so, so this kind of... Uh, Kind of an analog logic embedded in this digital communication that we had and and for me I, as i was continuing and progressing with the work it became just clear that it it, it needed to be there it was uh, it didn't make sense to to remove it because it was uh, very much uh, a player in our uh, encounter and in our conversation yeah and i mean like um as we talked about this is like a portrait of this man who's like who's trying to do his work and in doing his work, the, the lack of, uh, the numb ease with which communication happens is a part of his work. And I think, I mean, it's on a, another level, but the fact that he's, he has such an unease uh, with which he's communicating with you as part of the, shows his work quite, um, uniquely and quite mm, succinctly, mm. I, I feel like. I mean, it's interesting what, uh, just to follow up on this point, Zainab, uh, 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 to talk about the nature of his work and specifically in the video, it seems that uh, 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 his work is also, Abu Farid's work is one that is uh, for posterity almost, right? There's something about the way they, uh, he and the group of uh, uh, people that he was working with, uh, they protect and safeguard and hide the mosaics that, uh, that uh, uh, you know, it, it always feels that communication is for later. Uh, uh, you know, things will come up when we dig up these again. And, and I like this kind of latency in, 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 in his work a lot. Yeah. And actually, actually, it was in one of our conversations, Soledad br uh, brought this up, and I think it's very like true. The fact of doing work, like um, in times of, you know, heightened, unusual, in unusual times, when you're do like at a time when it's like not um, in a time of conflict, in a time of urgency, in a time of whatever it is, like not the... Uh, way that we do things in the usual way. Mm. I think having work to dedicate yourself to is also something that's very personally satisfying and it's very true. And I think this is this man talking about his work so passionately um, is the fact that like he, he is, it's his way of like being very passionate in it and like really um, uh, through this work, he's finding some sort of personal satisfaction. and. I mean, obviously, but like you see it so vividly in this video. And in that way, for me, anyways, the video is such a genuine and very intimate portrait of this guy. So maybe you can talk a little bit about how you feel like um, the fact that you, uh, you chose certain methodologies in mm. um, creating this video, uh, i.e. Mm. I'm talking about the fact that you uh, use the slide carousel or mm. other techniques mm. you can talk about how that sort of parallels the like the methodologies that this craftsman I'm going to call mm. him Abu Farid 
is using his craftsman if they have mm. any kind of a parallel or you can talk about them separately too if you don't think it's an echo or if they relate. Yeah, totally. I, I'll start with the, the use of the carousel. And, uh, uh, you know, in retrospect, I can, I can you know, think of several reasons, perhaps, how the carousel, came, the carousel projector came into play. Uh, as, I, as I mentioned uh, earlier, in, in revisiting the image folders that I had gone through uh, several times before, uh, I, uh, I, needed, I needed a sort of a distancing factor from the digital images that were slowly arriving to the cloud folders from Abu Farid. Slowly, but you know, <laughs> uh, surely arriving to the cloud, <laughs> cloud folders. And uh, materiality comes in again here. Uh, as, as I mentioned earlier, as the mosaic panels lose a particular materiality when they loop back to their source images, when they they become less of these uh, sculptural panels and more uh, 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 as uh, as images uh, within a, a kind of a group of source images that they were uh, inspired from. Uh, something else happens where the source images themselves acquire a different material and tactile dimension. They become slides. Um, and with the slides of the carousel, uh, I think uh, the images get displaced into uh, a different economy, perhaps they are resurrected in another medium. And of course, this carousel projector with its slides is, is a typical romanticized object uh, with its strong associations to earlier photographic times and practices. Uh, but as an apparatus, the carousel uh, allows the materialization of digital images into photographic objects. It also filters through Abu Farid's hundreds of snapshots, seemingly, seemingly augmenting them into the status of the photographic, right? So, so there's something about the, 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 the uh, I, I call it like a false hope somehow, where, where these snapshots become, uh, turn into the slides, uh, hence uh, bringing them closer to the photographic, but also to, uh, uh, with all the indexical baggage and the proof claims that come with the idea of the photographic. And I think this is, it was important because this idea of proof is something that guided Abu Farid's, I might call it obsessive documentation of his work at the Museum of Ma'arat al right? There was a kind of um, adamant uh, um, a kind of stress on uh, documenting uh, uh, each and every single gesture and move to, I think, to a point where interestingly, things can become performative uh, in terms and in, in front of the, uh, the camera. But, but this is nostalgic image of the carousel projector. I, you know, I think hopefully soon is soon troubled when one takes notice of uh, the digital numbers on many of the images where you have these pixelated dates and times that clash with the, with the nature of the medium that, that they are in. Similarly with the sound, as you mentioned, where it cuts off and gets glitchy, revealing its digital and internet roots. Um, so in a sense, the carousel becomes this, the spine of the video, its structuring element, both visually and orally. But most importantly, it is also um, the viewing device which furnishes uh, the spectatorial space that both the viewers and I share. The carousel becomes the communication channel almost between Abu Farid and me, uh, as if he's speaking through the projector, so much so that at one point in the video, his sigh, uh, when he blows, his sigh blows and unsettles the dust particles of the projector. Mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, and uh, I think that uh, this, this idea of uh, uh, the, the kind of uh, the difficulty in, in receiving images, the choppiness of, uh, of all of the um, videos that I was receiving uh, uh, also lent itself quite uh, interestingly in a formal manner, at least to the kind of choppy, choppy projector structure. Uh, in a sense, also, I always associated artwork images on slides to art historical, um, art history lessons, which, you know, tend to focus on certain art historical canons. And, and in a sense, I feel that uh, I like to think of this work as encroaching on these lessons and their exclusive canons to, to have a different voice heard, to, to, uh, to say something else that uh, about someone who is, you know, historical canons and might not might pass by uh, without you know giving the needed attention to. Mm -hmm. 
but you mentioned the parallels maybe um yeah. uh, the parallels between between uh, between the works i think that something that i alluded to earlier maybe i can expand on uh, this idea of, of abu farid's work as being um practical uh, or urgent, direct, and utilitarian. I, I, I find it very different from the way I work. And I think this is why I was very uh, drawn to it. I think that uh, uh, I find the DIY techniques that they uh, that Abu Farid and the group of people uh, tested and used are uh, are quite fascinating. And, and they, they seem to be belonging to, uh, to a different Time, time period somehow, uh, uh, they're really uh, the, the product of the immediate moment of, yeah. of moments of fear. Uh, and, and, you know, but, but they're also very um, uh, uh, tender. There's a kind of tenderness in, in you know, in, in painting these mosaic faces and then covering them. Uh, I mean, for me at the beginning of the video that there's, there seems to be almost like a funeral happening, right? With the white cloth being held and the mosaic covers being covered with this white uh, cloth. Uh, uh, there is a kind of tenderness where someone is caring for, uh, 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 I don't know, his, uh, it's caring for a human being somehow. And uh, someone who wants to, to, you know, to keep an eye on this, quote unquote, person slash mosaic that they, you know, also employ techniques that are much more advanced than the DIY ones, than the DIY ones, which where, you know, I'm talking about the smart water, for example, right? So there's something very interesting in, in the spectrum of the techniques used from the kind of glue, uh, Vitac cloth or some cloth that would kind of hold the tessera together to a spray of the drop of water that contains a code which you can track back to the uh, piece that you have. Uh, and I feel that in between these kind of uh, extremes of technologies, uh, uh, I, I also jumped in somehow and, and you know, from, from Zoom to slide projector to, uh, 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 I don't know, uh, animations on the mosaics there, there was also a kind of, it felt inviting to be able to uh, explore in this spectrum. Yeah, I mean, I think like I, uh, the thing he says about the sandbags really stayed with me. I think it says it all, you know, he says, what are sandbags are, uh, used for? They're supposed to protect someone from not dying. And the same way it's, we put them in front of the mosaic so they don't die. I don't think he says it that way, but totally. you know, like that kind of intimacy and the caretaking of the, for these things, it's such an intimate moment. And also something that you just said, like there's something so urgent about all of these methods that he's, he and his team are using that you feel immediately attracted to them or like you, feel, mm -hmm. you associate with them because it's so straightforward, right? Yeah. So yeah. We have to do something. Okay, yeah. that's the easiest thing. And I think for me anyways, when I read this video that you've made, for me, like it's the same way of, you trying to connect with them is also very like urgent in the sense or direct let's put it like it's the easiest way and it's the um it's the most straightforward of uh, way of connecting with your your subject matter mm -hmm. uh, which i love like i think it's a very intimate portrait it's in the same way that is like he is so intimately taking care of these objects so i really like that kind of an association between them um so that's something what uh, that i was thinking about you commented on something and i want to like ask you about it and maybe it's just a very passing comment but um uh the eyes on the mosaics that are like going back and forth it's like it's it's one of my favorite moments but uh there's something very playful about them and i I read it in a certain way that like, they're so playful. There's like the playfulness aspect of life in between all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. But I don't know like what you were thinking or if you want to speak to it, it's not like, I think it's just there and it's such a like- No, totally. I'm glad you picked up on it. And it was really, it was actually, uh, uh, it really came throughout the process. It was not premeditated before, but it was, you know, just working with these images up close and, uh, uh, you know, zooming in on them and uh, just trying to uh, really have have fun with them also. I mean, it's a somber subject for sure and as, as it should be or as it needs to be, but also, uh, you know, in our conversations, Abu Farid and I, there were also moments of 
lightness. And, and I think these are important. And there was something almost uh, intuitive in moving the eyes. Uh, because the sound of the projector was there, you had the face of this guy with, with who's being almost um, shrouded, right? Because you know, like it's someone again. It's going back to the intimacy, the face of uh, Abu Farid, uh, Abu Farid's face with the face of this mosaic guy. Uh, you know, he's, he's he's touching him somehow. But then, and then, you know, like I I just felt there there, there it would be interesting to to start. Um, uh, utilizing the medium I'm working with, right? Again, uh, the, the, the mosaics have moved into images, but then images can be animated. Images can be can start moving, and so so it started with this guy moving his eyes to the sound of the projector to eventually uh, develop into different animations, and then we it culminates in this animation at the end, which uh, which. Uh, which I think for me, what the animation does on these mosaics is, is it allows uh, allows them to be these kind of more flexible, inclusive spaces. Um, and maybe uh, I don't know if, if if this could be a segue to to, to expanding a little bit on this idea. Um, I feel that in in many sense uh, that mosaics could be uh, or have been uh, luxurious and exclusive uh, uh, documents uh, of their time, uh, often showing uh, I don't know hunting scenes, uh, 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 war scenes, uh, all of that, and then you know the, the subjects that they portrayed are quite expected, somewhat conservative, traditional, uh, and and I feel that. Um, I wanted to, or I'm, I'm, I hope, I'm, I was hoping to open to open that space up, uh, to open the space of the mosaic as uh, a commemorative space for people like uh, Akram and uh, Ahmad, who uh, who were protecting the mosaic of Hercules behind them, to uh, uh, I don't know, to uh, a space where someone can imagine a fantastical scene where the lion and the bull are uh, switch switch places. Um, uh, and and you know, uh, hinting at uh, toppling power, hinting at uh, reversal of of, of uh, eternal roles that you know, lion and the bull had. So, uh, I, I, or, or for example, the the mosaic uh, with um, the WhatsApp uh, uh, image that says "I'm sorry," right? So, uh, images are are cross and uh, change and uh, shape shift throughout these different uh, apparatuses and, and media. And uh, for me, the mosaic uh, is one of them, as, as old as it is, or as uh, weighty perhaps uh, uh, as it is, I felt that um, it, this, this could be a chance uh, to open it up, to rethink it from a contemporary uh, uh, point of view somehow. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. Maybe this is also like, as you said, it's a good point to sort of bring up the fact that like um, the mosaic, mosaics are but one of the things that are archeological uh, conservation space like the one Abu Farid is managing. And it is one of the, you know, like it is one of the artifacts um, and, uh, but the, it is your entryway into like getting in touch with Abu Farid. And maybe we can talk a little bit about, I mean, it comes at the end, it's a totally different, totally different work. This is the moment to say like what your initial like mosaics uh, piece was and sort of like in the process of thinking through that, because I think there's something about like where we are in 2021, 2020, 2021, where things are not like, as we talked about physical anymore, uh, we're doing this conversation online and this, uh, this work is being going to be uploaded online. So it's um, mm, everything mm. is like uh, a very material subject matter is like being transported to, to the um, uh, space. And uh, that's something you dealt with. So maybe like talk about what that process was, what your the initial like work that you did um, mm, was mm. and sort of what that process is bringing in, into the, uh, video work, the work that we're talking about was like. Yeah, I think uh, I, I mentioned it briefly at the beginning, but uh, uh, as I was thinking of these mosaics and using these particular source images to to uh, to create these mosaics, the the challenge of of the of the online came in, and it really kind of uh, reshuffled everything, uh, and particularly this this topic of of materiality. Uh, 
I, and I think in this work, the question of materiality is, is entangled with a with, uh, question of apparatuses and technologies. Uh, I, I think that what, uh, uh, moving from the mosaic pieces to the video with all of its uh, uh, iterations of images, I, what happens is that the image gets refracted as it passes through the different media. From the online drive that, uh, that included the original digital images to the photographic slides, to uh, the WhatsApp images, to the YouTube stills and to the mosaics. The image uh, flickers between these media, these different media. And, and in the translation from one to the other, uh, something changes, signification, what it signifies changes. And, and there are certain arguments that are subtly made also. Uh, for instance, in, in the mosaic where, uh, uh, in the mosaic, in, the, in that scene actually, where we see uh, um, an image that says, I am sorry. And then after it, we see a mosaic of a, a bear and a pig, uh, a bear chasing a pig. Uh, the, 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 the whole the mosaic, but the whole scene around it also is, is constructed around this uh, image attachment, which was sent on WhatsApp, WhatsApp chat conversation. Uh, and upon a visit to the site where the mosaic initially was laid, uh, the image sender, the person who sent the image, uh, uh, noticed that the mosaic had vanished. So he had gone before, so the mosaic in situ went back again and did not find it. He notifies the receiver, which was probably Abu Farid on WhatsApp, uh, by sending the image of the initial mosaic that he had taken with, with this kind of poignant remark, I am sorry, with, I don't know, several exclamation marks. So this image acts as, as the evidence of work that has been looted. Uh, and the mosaic itself of, of, of this image becomes a kind of a petrification of this moment of exchange. Um, and, and I think one argument that could be made from this is uh, thinking of preservation uh, 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 in different ways, in addition to the work that Abu Farid and his team and uh, Amr Azim and uh, 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 they are doing, uh, and and for me this, uh, you know, not not. Of course, I mean it's easier said because I'm I'm not you know it's it's not something that I'm attached to. But uh, uh, for the sake of the argument, uh, thinking of this looted mosaic as vanishing forever versus thinking of it being preserved through uh, a, through a, through a duplicate or through a facsimile or through an image that is appropriated or through a reproduction. Uh, and, and for me, this, this opens up the question of preservation. It moves this question from uh, ideas of provenance and uh, of, uh, 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 you know, which, which many uh, artists and, and uh, writers have you know, emphasized that it is a Western concept. Uh, we, we move from this question of provenance to question of uh, uh, what is the image really saying? What is the kind of um, uh, the soul of the image somehow without kind of, you know, being a super uh, um, spiritual <laughs> about, you know, the soul of the image, right? But the kind of the, the stuff of the image. And I think that this thing can be um, preserved and built upon and, uh, uh, you know, sometimes maybe destroyed and rebuilt in, 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 in different ways. But of course, I, I insert these, these subtle arguments in and, in, in and through Abu Farid's kind of uh, more uh, uh, urgent, physical, factual approach. Uh, I, I don't see them as uh, either or. I see them also as, as additional ways of, of thinking about uh, preservation. Yeah. And it like totally comes across. I, I read it as such uh, as I watch the video as well. I mean, it's interesting to me because when we first started talking about the commission, it wasn't like, uh, it seemed like a hard thing to do or like the, to talk about these things. It's like, um, uh, it, like you had been exploring and doing these mosaics for a while. And I think like getting in touch with this man and like putting him on display was something else. And I'm so like, it, for me, it's very heartening to see how it came about to embody a lot of the issues and concerns you have through a portrayal of um, this uh, man. So uh, for me, it's really interesting to have been involved in the in the process of it. So I thank you for that, for letting me uh, be a part of it, uh, observe it uh, quite closely. Of course, and thank you as well for being an interlocutor and, uh, you know, someone who's uh, 
was very much a part of the process. And yes, I mean, I, I totally agree with you. I think what, the, that what this commission or, or uh, what this commission opened up or allowed is, is really a kind of a um, uh, 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 shift in perspective, right? I, if, if we think of these mosaics as the facade of a particular work, then what happened? What happened behind the scenes? How? What, what are the wires? And the wires are really, are really Abu Farid uh, and and his kind of work and our conversation. Yeah. Uh, um, so thank you as well, Zainab, yeah. very much, and Ashkal Alwan and TBA Twenty One. <laughs> Exactly. And I'm so looking forward to seeing iterations of this and you go forward with this. Um, thank you. All right. Thank you.